Hi, my name is Ana Jimenez and today I'm here to talk about DevRest, DRMs and community building within open source program office. So let's get started. Um, during the years, companies have realized the many benefits open source has and a lot of them uh, started to consume open source projects, but also they, some of them, they started to contribute to open source projects. I can give you an example, for instance, Samsung. Samsung, uh, it's a company which software has open source components and they realized that consuming to them wasn't enough. So they started to contribute as well to get their contributors accepted in, that, in those projects. And also there are other companies that even release uh, new open source projects and the benefits that that can have, for instance, the, the many benefits can be, for instance, to attract talent and retain talent. So there are companies that do all of this. There are companies that just focus on two or, or one uh, part of this. So there is not only the inbound part that will be to consume open source, but the outbound part. So so companies um, realize that to accomplish all this, we need specialists from all different fields. We need legal, we need community building, uh, we need human resources. So they started to incorporate in their company a place called open source program offices in order to have a centralized place to achieve all these different tasks, all these different activities. So today's talk, I would like to focus on the area of releasing open source projects and the main specialists that should be involved in there and talking about community building specialists. So when we talk about community building specialists, the first thing that might come to our mind will be maybe project managers, community managers, marketing specialists. But what about their first? Because I know just a few that roles are getting into open source program offices, but it's not being mainstream at all. And for me, the roles are community building specialists too, and can bring a lot of value to open source program offices. So let's bring a little bit of context about the role first. So developer relations um, roles are diverse. And what I mean with that is that depending whether they have been hired by a foundation or by a company, and depending whether their, um, the software of that foundation or that company is open source or not, the objectives are going to be different. They're, they're going to change. And not only that, they can be reporting to different departments. I've I've known the roles that report to marketing, for instance, and I've known the roles that report to engineering, which is a completely different uh, area, and even others report to support. And this makes it really, really difficult to measure success in the, for their roles, because they're going to have different KPIs, different OKRs, depending on the department they belong to. So, what does a DevRel do, actually? So I would say, look at their name. It says developer relations, and that means building relationships with developers. And some DevRels might want to get users to their company or foundation. So users will be the one that asks questions through GitHub or GitLab or through forum. Others would like to get contributors. So those that not only provides questions, but provides answers. 
and other ones might like to would like to get maintainers that are the ones that provides code uh, through pull request or through merge request, for instance. So from an OSPO point of view, what will be the call? So I think that it's important, will be important and really interesting that a goal will be transition from users to maintainers. And that's something a dev world can perfectly do. So to, to achieve this goal, uh, I think it's really important to understand first the developer journeys, because there are multiple developer journeys where the developer might um, might be and start to know wh who, what was the starting point and how what is the journey that uh, he or he is having or they is having. Also it's important to understand connections so of course developers are not just in one platform they are not only on github or on gitlab uh, they are on mailing lists, they are on chats, uh, they are on forums. So it's important to understand the different connections and where a single developer is across the different platforms. And how those platforms are changing when we are looking at the different stages of the developer journey. So, okay, that's great, but how can we achieve this? How can we know this? So as Lord Kelvin said, to measure is to know. And here's a quick story. Uh, this is about Chaff. Chaff is uh, one of our current customers at Vitaria. So Chaff uh, had also user, uh, user community and contributor community. And they had this goal of Okay, we want to transition from users to, to contributors, right? So they identified their main platforms where their community is. So they, they know their, their communities in this course, in GitHub and on, and in Slack. And when they become contributors, they start to add, uh, more activity on GitHub. So with this, they were able to understand the developer journey and the different connections uh, between platforms. And this will help them to know how much support and how much uh, inter internal effort and how much internal developers to have add to the different platforms. So when we think about what to measure, it gets clear Metrics involved in knowing your community should be uh, involved as well. So to get this, traditionally in marketing, um, this has been done through a CRM, a customer relationship management. But is that enough for DevRel specialists and community specialists? Because actually, developers behave quite differently. So the developers have different touch points, different motivations and different ways to interact. And traditional CRMs cannot achieve all this. So I came up with the idea of the community relationship management. So to, to achieve this, one important key point is the identity affiliation management. So this will help us to uh, know who is who across the different platforms and avoid multiple identities. So there are some existing tooling for that. Uh, one of them is Sorting Hat, that it's part of Cremor Lab software that is also part of the Linux Foundation Chaos project. It's a, um, so, uh, Grimo Lab and Sorting Heart are 100% open source. And we are always looking for contributors. So I've, I will give you the, the URL to the GitHub repos in case you're interested and you would like to contribute.
And also just to mention that Sorokin Hat has a user interface, the one you're saying on the slides, that it's called Hustle, and that makes it easier to make to declare organizational affiliations, uh, even correct attributions of contributors. So to sum up, let's let's bring up these three main ideas. So the first of all, DevRel can help to transition users to maintainers and that help open source ecosystems within OSPOS. Also, traditional marketing platforms are not enough to achieve all these goals. And affiliation management system is key to build a CRM where C stands for community. Short story about Vitor here. Um, we are the core developers of Quemo Lab and Sorting Hat, and we are a software development analytics firm, and we are helping companies and organizations to understand the software development projects that matter to them. So that's all for today. Thank you so much for staying until the end. And if you have any questions, just feel free to ask. Bye. Um, hello, uh, welcome, thank you for staying here until the end. So now we're gonna go through questions. I don't see any questions right now. So I will just invite you to ask any questions you may have about this talk. Let's wait maybe two, three more minutes because we have plenty of time. And yeah, uh, I'm here to to help you. <laughs> okay, so uh, what are the top three metrics that DevRel should look at? Okay, uh, well, as I mentioned during the talk, um, depending on the department a DevRel is there, that a DevRel is reporting to, they might be having different ways to measure the effort and ways to measure that success. But um, I think having metrics regarding community building uh, should be also there. I'm not saying that it's the only thing, but it should be definitely be there. Um, actually, I've a uh, long time ago, I created a blog post talking about those kind of metrics that we should have, such as the developer engagement. Um, I was talking about the developer activity. Uh, let me, I, I don't know if I can um, write you something here. Okay. So top metrics. So let me start with you the blog post because I think it's going to help you better than start mentioning some of those metrics. Um, do, okay. Here it goes. Okay. So. Oh, and then Okay, I think you can see the link. So there I talk about some metrics uh, regarding uh, community, community metrics, and I hope it helps. So next questions, uh, what would you suggest the DevRel professional to get us started with getting data to show the ROI? Okay. So as I mentioned, first of all, will be the community and start looking for metrics regarding community. And after all, of course, depending on the department you are, then start looking for a specific, for instance, if you're reporting to marketing, then should be specific metrics for marketing. If you're reporting to engineering, specific metrics for engineering. Next question. Uh, what is the easiest way to manage community metrics when you're new to the, uh, sorry, GL, uh, Samantha, I don't, if you can, 
Um, let me know what GL is, sorry. Okay, I will wait for your answer and then I will uh, answer the next one. What are the top? Okay, that one was already answered. Um, how can I find mentorship to improve that well? Uh, okay, actually, I don't really know how to answer that i will think about it and if you can follow if you follow me on twitter my name is um anna well it's it was on the slides as well but if you reach out to me i will answer to that and next grimoire's onboarding method oh grimoire labs okay Okay, okay, got it. So, coming back to... Uh, okay, I will say if you have go to the GitLab repo, in there, there is a lot of documentations regarding exactly that answer. So I will suggest you go to first um, chaos community. So it's this URL. Uh, hold on, I need to, okay. Okay, so go to that URL and then in software, you will find uh, the Grimoire Lab repo, and in there, there's a lot of documentation where you can search for that exactly. Okay. Um, mm. Okay. What else? Okay, how can you community with all the members of the community, users, contributors, maintainers? So I will say first, uh, learn where those users, those contributors and those uh, maintainers are, because they will probably be on different platforms. Like for instance, maybe your uh, users might be in this course and maybe your maintainers may be and contributors may be on GitHub. So first, you need to know exactly where the different community, like where your users are, where your contributors are, and where your maintainers are. They might be also mixed. Like for instance, when I talk about chef use case, uh, they they say that sometimes you can find users also on GitHub, but mainly they will be on on this course and Slack because they are not contributing actively to code. They are just asking questions and getting into, into the platform, into the software. Um, okay. Um, can you give an example of how metrics have been used to understand a developer journey and how those insights allowed growing the community. Okay, so as I was saying, Chef is a clear example. So they had a lot of users, but not so many contributors. And what they wanted to do is uh, go from users to contributors. And by looking at the different platforms, they could understand the different uh, touch points and the different interaction they were having when being on Slack. And then when those people that were on Slack on, on this course moved to GitHub, for them, the, it was already a transition. And that can be done through the affiliation management 
and any affiliation management identity affiliation identity management sorry that can also know who is who across the different platforms so if a person was initially having activity on this course and they move then move to github uh, this affiliation system can know that that's the exact same person even though we are talking about complete different platforms uh what else um okay and i think i think that's all yeah i'm not missing any any question i think yeah but just to come back for about the mentorship question just if you message me on um, twitter i will answer to you We'll think about that and answer to you uh, in a short period of time. Okay, so I think we have four minutes left, as far as I know. Thank you for staying here until the end. Okay, what are the top three metrics that are there? Oh, that's already done. What's, what's your Twitter attack for community notes? Okay, yeah. <laughs> I will answer to you. Uh, t -t 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 -t. Okay. Okay, so this one. Metrics to measure inner source. Okay, so uh, that's a different topic, but there is a community called Inner Source Commons and they're working on exactly that what you're mentioning let me give you the link for that um we're also in Viteria uh actively participating here on building those metrics as well so if you go to this link um okay yeah, so if you go to that link, uh, you will find more information about metrics to measure inner source. And, yep. Uh, I don't think we've got the link. Okay, what? Which link? The Grimoire Lab or the Chaos link, Samantha? So, okay, I'm gonna send it to you again. In case you cannot see, it's if you have my Twitter account, just message me and I will send you the link there. So, okay, so this is the link. Okay, Screamo Lab, yep. Okay. And um, yes, okay. Well, it, it's working well, this platform. 
Uh, I think that's all. And it's already 45. So thank you so much. And yeah, um, I don't know how to cut this, but <laughs> bye everyone. And thank you again. <laughs>